We're blessed by the best, ain't we? God's good all the time. Absolutely. I thank you for the privilege of being able to stand up here in front of you and bring you the Lord's Word. I, I consider it a true privilege. Um, tonight I'll be, uh, this kind of a teaching, preaching, I guess. I've never done this before like this, so we'll see how it goes. But uh, it'll be out of Matthew chapter 24. The Lord's laid this on my heart. I've been studying this for several months. But I didn't want to, I didn't know how to go about doing this, so we'll leave it in the hands of the good Lord. Y'all can just tell me whenever you get where you're at. Matthew chapter 24, starting with verse, verse 1 and ending with verse 14. Y'all just say amen when everybody gets there. Amen. amen. All right. I'll go ahead and read. It says, <clears throat> well, let me explain one thing. This here is uh, the second longest sermon in the New Testament of Jesus. Uh, this is what they call the uh, Oliver uh, Discourse. He preached this on the Mount of Olives. And uh, I always consider Matthew chapter 24 very, very interesting. I think, I think we all need to know something about Matthew 24, this day and time we live in today. So, you know, I battled this. I, I had several different verses or uh, chapters in my mind uh, or scriptures, but this is what the Lord, uh, He wouldn't let me alone. So we're going to see how it goes. So I'll go ahead and start. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto him, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left one stone upon another. Thou shalt not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be effect, afflicted, and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. I'll pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being able to stand up here and bring your word, Lord. I pray the words I see, say tonight would be the words you'd have me to say, Father God. And Lord, I pray that you just stand right beside of me, Lord, and keep your arm around me, Father. And Lord, I, <clears throat> I pray for uh, the people that's house uh, is on fire, Lord. I pray you just lay your sweet and holy hand upon them, Lord. And Lord, I pray that for this lost and dying world, that they may all come to know you before it is too late, Father God, because I believe we're living in the last days, Lord. Lord, and I pray that if anyone here tonight that don't know you, that they may all come to know you before it's too late. And I pray all these things, Lord, in the name of your Son, Jesus, and amen. amen. <clears throat> this teaching here, or preaching teaching, whatever you want to call it, it's going to be on the five, there's five signs of Jesus' coming. And I do believe it's already has started. I really, truly do. And you know, as Christians, I believe each and every one of us has the gift of discernment, spiritual discernment. It's up to us if we turn it on. And I believe we can turn it on through reading and studying His Word and through prayer. 
you know, we're living in a, in a time of uh, great evil. I mean, a lot of us uh, as Christians, we just want to push it under the, the door. But really and truly, everywhere you look, the devil is going rampant. And you know, it's demonic. Even as, but us as Christians this day and time, in the church age we live in today, we don't even talk about demons. But you know, demons are real. You know, the Bible teaches it, so I believe it. I had this discussion with my dad. My dad, he gave his life to the Lord, but, you know, for two years after he gave his life to the Lord, he still told me that he didn't believe demons were real. But, you know, that's a lie straight from the pits of hell that the devil wants. He don't want nobody to believe in him because as long as they don't believe in him, it's all right. You know, we can uh, see people dying and going to hell every single day. And, you know, a lot, a lot of people... They, uh, they believe that when they die, they just cease to exist. I was witnessing to a boy once, and he told me, he said, uh, he don't believe that there's heaven or hell. He said he believed that this is as close to heaven as we're going to get is right here on this earth. And when we die, it's just all done. But he's going to party as long as he's here on this earth. And, you know, but this is nothing more than the lie that the devil has presented to the world. And the world believes it because they're looking for something easy to believe in. And, you know, they think uh, the world teaches nowadays, especially this country. Don't get me wrong. I thank God every day for the United States of America. But it has went so far away from God that it used to be considered a Christian nation. Now it's a pagan nation. And, you know... Everybody says that all religions are the same. But you know what they don't realize about Christianity? Christianity, ain't, it's not a religion. It's a way of life. You know, becoming a Christian, it ain't, it ain't about uh, doing this or doing that. It's, it's a 24-7 thing that you do or live. You know, once you become a Christian, it's not just about coming to church on Sunday because, you know, churches are full of people that come every Sunday. And churches are full of people that may die and go to hell. You know, they might uh, have a head knowledge of God, but they don't truly know God. And, you know, it's, the, it's really and truly the Christian's fault because we've held the, tr the truth back. This is the truth. We get them into church, but we truly won't tell them how to truly be saved. A lot of people, they'll come up front, you know, chewing bubble gum and smacking and laughing and going on. But, you know, the Bible tells us to come before Him with a broken heart. How many people truly come before the Lord with a broken heart? You know, a lot of people that I've talked to, a lot of Christians that I've talked to, they have a hard time telling me about, you know, their uh, testimony. You know, what the Lord did for, you, for them. And you, I, you won't believe how many people I've had ask me, why, why do you talk about Jesus so much, Paul? I said, because of what Jesus did for me. And I'll never get tired of saying that. I mean, you know, the world might got, get tired of hearing it, but I'll never get tired of saying it. Because what he did for me is why I'm up here tonight. You know, for years I ran from him. And you know, as Christians, we talk about the, the evil uh, in this world today. It's every bit of our faults as Christians. I'm just going to tell you right now, because we're spiritually dead Christians. You know, we need to look up. We worship, we, we have the creator of the universe standing behind us. The power that rolled the stone away from Jesus' tomb is the same power that lives in us. But we're scared to death to step out and go tell somebody about Jesus. That's why the devil is running rampant, especially here in America. America is a laughing stock at the rest of the, of the rest of the world. We worship our own. You go to Hollywood and everybody going, going wild because the movie star comes out. But, you know, how wild would it go if Jesus appeared right now? And it could happen. That's the reason I, I've been studying this, because I firmly believe, and I'm not no prophet, but I, I can feel the presence of Antichrist in the world today. Now, whether he knows who he is, I don't know. But I believe his presence is here in this world today. I believe that's how close we're living, because all these signs are coming together. It started in 1948 when Israel became a country again. I love studying Bible prophecy, and I believe as Christians, we all need to start studying Bible prophecy because we're living in some tough times, and we're going to have to get our, off our hands and get out and go tell people about the Lord. And if you get tired of doing that, I believe you get tired of being a Christian because that's the only thing He asked each and every one of us to do. I don't mean to get off too far. <laughs> I love you all.
<clears throat> but you know, I, I see it all around us though. Every single day, you know, we we as Christians have become weak. And I remember just when I was a little boy, you know, I'll be 51 years old here in a month. But you know, I can remember 30 years ago, 35 years ago when I was growing up, that churches was full. A little church down below my house, Mount Zion Free Will Baptist Church. It was packed. I remember the parking lot was full, and you know, both sides of the road was full. And now you can't hardly get a handful of people in here. And you know, I, I was thinking, back in the 60s, you know, you had JFK and several other politicians who, uh, even all the way back into the 40s with Mussolini and Hitler, you know, how they would say, well, they're the Antichrist. there have been so many people that thought they were the Antichrist. Nowadays, you don't hear about somebody being the Antichrist. The reason I, I got thinking about that, America don't even believe in God now. Most of America don't even believe in God. And I just heard on Moody Radio coming over here that Lifeway, that actually made, used to make our Sunday school books, did a survey. And only 27% of all angelical Christians even read their Bible. And it's a lower percentage than that that even believe what the Bible says is true. Now, how did you tell me that you're a Christian? Now, I'm, I'm not judging, but the Bible says if you don't see Christ in someone, He's not there. But how can you tell me that you're a Christian and you don't believe what the Bible says is true? That's false. You know, that's completely satanic. But that's, that's the trick that the devil has, has played on people this day and time. <clears throat> I, I've took a, a few notes, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, uh, read a few of them. It says, the first sign is a reminder that uh, religious um, claritans, or how would you say that word, don't claritans? Anyway, I went over this, <laughs> this word. I have a hard time with some of these hard words, but just bear with me. It says, may be found in every age. In our own generation, we have only uh, to think of David Koresh and Jim Jones. You know, and, and that's one of the signs that Jesus was talking about was false leaders who would come out and say, I am the Messiah. And you know, David Koresh, he said he was the Messiah. Jim Jones, he, he said he was the Messiah. And we see what happened with all that. The devil has used these people. And this, this day and time, you know, I, I remember several years ago, you know, people would predict things and the whole country would get behind that and they'd worry about that, you know. But you can't tell me you read the Bible and if you put any bit of faith in this stuff because, you know, when, when the disciples asked Jesus when these things would come or, you know, Jesus said that he don't know, not even the angels in heaven knows, only the Father. But he said they will be signs. And this is the five signs of the second coming of, of Jesus Christ. And one of them is, is, you know, spiritual deception. And, you know, we see that everywhere, every day. I don't know if I'll get to all five of them. I've got a lot of notes here. <laughs> but I don't want us to go for two hours unless it's the Lord's will. I want to do whatever the Lord says to do. But, you know... Uh, and it says, as we approach the end of the age, spiritual deception will increase because spiritual gullibleness will increase. Even as Christians, I've even had Christian friends that, you know, uh, that they had heard something and they'd even say, well, you know, Paul, have you ever thought of it like that? And, you know, the devil, he, he can present something to you or you'll even question it. And I even go back even to think about a Jehovah Witness. You know, the Jehovah Witnesses can put it on so thick and so pretty well strong. If you're not studied up and prayed up, they'll have you question what you believe. Because I know I've been there. And my mom, my mom used to be, she, she loved talking to the Jehovah Witnesses. She'd let every one of them in. I will too, but I, I love telling them about Jesus, the true Jesus. But you know, I've learned that one, one of the ways that you can actually uh, pin a Jehovah Witness up is just ask him straight up or her. What do, who do they believe that Jesus is? And they'll, straight, they'll come straight and tell you. But when they witness to you, they'll beat around all that bush. But if you ask straight on, who do they think Jesus is? They'll tell you. And I can tell you right now, they, th they pretty well think that he was Lucifer's brother. And if you want to get deeper than that into it, you know, they can, they can go deeper. I worked with a lady uh, and, and a fellow, too, that was Jehovah's Witnesses. And when I heard them telling me what, who they thought Jesus was, it made me almost feel sick at my stomach. 
But you know, this stuff is going on and it's, it's actually causing Christians to question. And you know, another one of the signs of Jesus coming back is there's going to be a great falling away. And you know, what I believe that is, is Christians like we was talking, that's coming to church every Sunday, but they truly don't know Jesus. So you know, they're going to fall away because they really don't know what they believe. Because without Jesus being in our hearts, we're not saved anyway. It's all about the heart, everything Jesus taught. <clears throat> and in the, I'll take one at a time. It says, it says, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Um, and for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not, not yet. And you know, I, I see that everywhere we go. Uh, you know, conflicts. Um, you hear of Syria all the time, Iran, Iraq, you know, uh, uh, what is it, North Korea? I mean, there's, there's rumors of wars all the time. So this, this is one of the signs that's already come to be. Um, but, it, you know, Jesus said these things must come to be. I'm just going to hit on a few of these. And the, the sign three uh, that Jesus was talking about was really natural disasters. It says, uh, For nation shall rise against nation, the kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse, diverse places. Well, you know, the word pestilence, I really didn't know what the word pestilence meant until I actually started studying this. And the word pestilence could actually mean a disease. So, you know, I went back into Luke chapter 21, 11, and it actually brings up the word pestilence. It says, uh, add the word pestilence to the list. Pestilence is a outbreak of diseases. So... I got thinking about that. You know, one of the natural disasters we're always looking for is like tornadoes or hurricanes or something like that. But, you know, not necessarily. It don't have to be that. It could actually be an outbreak of Ebola or the AIDS or even cancer. And I look around and think about cancer. You can't go to a church and hear a church service without somebody, hardly a, you know, a, a request and prayer for somebody with cancer. It's just everywhere. It's, it's the world we live in today because, you know, the world we live in, it's, it's not only uh, a sinful world, but it's an unclean world because I believe, I believe it's in a lot of things we eat and, you know, and, and a lot of different things that we, uh, we do and some of the things we can't get away from now, nowadays. But, and it says, And then shall they deliver you up to be effect, afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And you know, I think as Christians right now, that's the place where we're at as far as being witnesses. A lot of, a lot of times uh, we're scared to death to go witness to somebody. I heard a boy, it's been, I think it was last year, but he was over in Walmart at South Winston. And he was pretty well preaching in the middle of the aisle. And there was a whole gang of people around him. And I got thinking, I said, man, I, I said, you know, now that boy has got the courage. The Holy Ghost is a hold of him. And you know, it's all about the, the Holy, Holy Spirit of the Lord. Because you know, as Christians, it's no longer about the physical body, it's a spiritual thing. And you know, that's the reason I always say we should pray every day to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. You know, to be able to get tore up. You know, a lot of times when I get up here, you know, especially when I'm doing something like this here, I really debated all day whether this was going to be a preaching or teaching. And I said, well, Lord, it's yours. <laughs> you do whatever you want to do. Because uh, on things like this, I get real excited about it, and I have to really pull myself back. But, you know, as Christians, we should be able to get excited about the Lord. I mean, honest to God, if we don't get excited about anything, we should be able to get excited about Jesus. You know, everywhere we go, somebody needs to hear about the Lord. And you know, the world don't know how to handle somebody that really gets tore up about the Lord. I mean, you can want to talk to somebody five minutes about Jesus. And a lot of, a lot of times I've had people call me a, you know, a Jesus freak or whatever. There's nothing I'd be, rather be known as than a Jesus freak. And you know, I remember when I was in high school, there was a boy that brought his Bible to school every day. And I was one of them that made fun of him. I'm ashamed to say that now. But praise the Lord, he had it going on then because he was he didn't care who made fun of him. He didn't care what they did to him. 
You know, he was standing up on the Word of God. And you know, as Christians, this, especially this day and time, we're going to have to get more deeper in our, in our Word, in, in the Bible. Start reading and praying more. I was wanting to read something that uh, C.H., uh, well, Charles Spurgeon wrote. This kind of just hit me, and I, I wanted to read it. It's really about prayer. It says, Have we used all right the singular power which the Lord entrusts us? Do we pray for our country, for other lands, or for the age? Do we in times of war, famine, pestilence, stand out as an inter intercessor, pleading that the days may be shortened? Do we laminate before God and the outburst of infidelity, error, or lewdness? Do we beseech our Lord Jesus to shorten the reign of sin by hasting His own glorious appearing? Let us get to our knees and never rest till Christ appears. You know, we as Christians, we need to be praying all the time. Not just a little. The other day I had to get in a safe uh, at one of the stores. They asked me to go and get in a safe. And uh, I prayed. I said, I said, Lord, please help me to do this. And one of the ladies that worked there, she was a Christian lady. She said, Paul, are you praying over us and getting in a safe? I said, I pray over everything. It ain't just about getting in a safe. But you know, everything we do as His children are important to Him. So we should pray about it. That's what's wrong with the church today. We don't pray. But you know, when, when me and Don first came here at Sydney, one of the things I noticed right off the bat, this is a praying church. And I could feel it spiritually. Not just because I could come in here and see it, but I felt it spiritually that these people truly prayed. And you know, that's, that's what drawn me. Because we as Christians, we need to be a praying, especially for this lost and dying world. It ain't something that we should be tickled about, uh, about the world dying and going to hell. This is something we should be on our knees and praying like if we had a family member that was dying. We should be praying for everybody that way, that strong. But you know, uh, it's sad, but we don't. But my prayer is that we do. That's the reason I always pray for a great spiritual revival. For God's Spirit just to break out, and uh, that I think I think in the, especially in the age we've always needed it, but especially in the age we live in today, because when we go out and if we think we'll get in trouble for doing something, and you know we we think it's just over there in the Middle East, but I can tell you right now it's coming right here, and it's going to get a lot worse. Because now, I, I, I just heard on the radio they're talking about trying to get the tax exempt uh, away from churches, you know, being for them being tax exempt. They're trying to make them untax exempt. And, you know, America don't fear God no more. They call it gods. And, uh, you know, just, just because somebody else say they worship Buddha, that don't mean that they're worshiping Jehovah. Worshiping Jehovah. And I've heard some Christians even say, well, as long as we're worshiping a God, that's all that matters. That's a Christian. You know, and, and the day we live in, I mean, we are blinded. And the devil has got us blinded. Like Paul said, he prays for their spiritual eyes to be opened and see what's happening around us. Because, you know, these things are happening ever, everywhere. I'll continue. In uh, the sign four... Fierce perse persecution. And that's pretty well what we just was talking about. But you know, how would we feel today? Like on TV, I saw last year or a year before last year where uh, ISIS had a guy getting ready to cut his head off and, unless he, you know, uh, became a, a Muslim or whatever. But you know, would we stand strong today if that if we was put in that same situation? And we could be we could be done like that when we leave here today. But are we actually spiritually strong enough to be able to overcome that? I don't know if we are or not. I pray that we are. And I know I always think about Peter, which I've probably brought this up in other. I know I've brought it up several times in Sunday school. But you know, Peter, he. Uh, he denied Christ three times, even though he walked with him on a daily basis and he saw all the miracles that Jesus done. He still denied him. 
So, you know, we walk by faith. Would we truly take a bullet for the Lord? Or worse than that, you know, I, I read this one story about these uh, missionaries over in a Middle Eastern country that they was these 10 uh, Muslims that asked this man and his wife to spit on the Bible and denounce Jesus. And they wouldn't do it. So they held him down, and then 10 of them raped his wife in front of him. And, you know, she said, she said, you do not do it. She told him, she said, you do not do it. And he didn't. So, you know, how many of us could do that? You know, it's easier when it's just us, but if they got somebody that you, you love, you know, going to hurt them, that's a different story. But, you know, if both of you are Christians, we can all look up because we're working for, toward heaven anyway. That's our number one goal is heaven. And I look forward to it every single day. Sign five, widespread apostasy. <laughs> this verse paints a picture of unprecedented religious apostasy away from the truth in the last days. And it even talks, talks about it in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3, verses 1 through 9, where it talks about there'll be preachers that come and they're just going to tickle your ear. They're going to tell you whatever you want to hear. They're not going to tell you that you can die and go to hell. You know, they're just going to tell you what you want to hear. And it's all going to be, I believe, in the name of money. Because I look on TV and I see a lot of these mega churches. And I'm not saying they're all, I'm not saying all that's bad. But you see, when you have 2,000 members of a church and the preacher is telling you what you want to hear, and uh, I have to, Joe Osteen, I'm, I mean, I'll, I'll bring him up because I used to watch him quite a bit until I saw an interview with him on Larry King. And Larry King asked him straight on, he said, do you consider a Mormon your brother in Christ? And he would not say that he didn't consider a Mormon. And I can tell you right now as Christians, and a lot of Christians will They'll, they, before they'll actually come straight out and say this, they'll say, well, we're not really supposed to judge. But you know, any religion that says Jesus is not God and didn't die on the cross for us is nothing more than a cult, period. I don't care if it's Jehovah Witness, Mormons, whoever they are. And you know, as Christians, I think one of the greatest evils they are is to keep our mouth shut. I think that's straight from the pits of hell. And believe me, I ran from it for a long, long time because I was so shy and whatever. whatever. <laughs> but you know, there's no more running for me. If they kill me today, I'm going to stand on this word right here because that's all it's about for me. Honest to God. I want to dedicate the rest of my life to telling somebody about Jesus because of what He did for me. Because without Him, I wouldn't even be here talking to you. And I'm sure it's like that for most everybody here. I mean, I don't know all, all the things you all had to go through, but I'm sure you had to go through something for Jesus to come into your life. And you know, I couldn't even touch Jesus, but His mercy came running for me. So you know, that's, uh, that's why I tell people about Him. Even though it terrifies me to get in front of somebody. You know, but honest to God, when I pray, and I pray, if you pray with a true heart, it's all about prayer. You can't pray with your head, you've got to pray with your heart. But when you truly pray with your heart and ask the Lord to help you. I can feel him standing beside of me right now. Even in some of the things that I said, well, man, I, I don't know if I can doing that right or whatever, but I've learned as long as we do it in the name of Jesus, it's right. It don't matter. So praise the Lord, you know, and I get, I get tore up about, about Jesus and there's nothing else that I'd rather get tore up about. Now. But you know, uh, that's like tonight, you know, with this, this here, uh, I could go on a lot longer. Believe me, uh, because there's a whole lot to be said here. But as Christians, my prayer is for each and every one of us as Christians, not just here, but in every church. I pray as Christians we can all come together in one accord, body, mind, and soul, and be the lights that the Lord wants us to be, no matter what. And don't let denominations keep us from this or from that, because in God's, I mean, we're children of God, the creator of the universe has saved each and every one of us. And He knows our name. You think about that. I think about it all the time. I really, truly do. 
But anyway, I guess that's where I'll stop at tonight. That wasn't, uh, that wasn't too awful bad, but uh, <laughs> that's something I enjoy. I love studying Bible prophecy, and uh, my prayer is, especially for this day and time, that we all get into studying Bible prophecy because it's coming. And you know, a lot, and if anybody has any questions, that's fine too. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Last night on the news, cockroach in one of these foreign countries that pesticide or nothing would affect them. And the Lord wrote that this very scripture talked about the end times. It's about how much disease occur in the spring. Right. And you know, I think, well, you, you think about it, uh, uh, Islamic country, they don't have to have a nuclear bomb. All they have to do is have a small capsule of Ebola and put it on the head of a missile and explode it over a state in, in the United States. And as scary as that sounds, that could happen. But do we worry about it? No, we don't worry about it. We praise the Lord about it because we got to go on home. If that happens today. But you know, as Christians, we get more caught up in holding on to this life than we do getting out and talking about Jesus. We're scared to death. We're a scared to death people. And my prayer is, well, I think what well, the Bible tells us even, sometimes we have to be purified through fire. So sometimes we might have to experience some bad things for good things to come out of us. I know that's been the case for me several times. But you know, uh, we as Christians, we're going to have to get more serious about these things because all these signs that this is this uh, one. I mean, this this whole chapter is actually about, and I've heard a lot of people talk about the Great Tribulation and, and the rapture of the church. Well, you know, Jesus, like Jesus said, nobody knows when that's coming. I've heard Christians say that, you know, they don't want to die. They just want to be raptured up. That ain't no guarantee. You know, the rapture's coming, that's a guarantee. But for you to be raptured up is no guarantee. So we need to get out and work for the Lord. We shouldn't just sit and wait on our hands and knees for the rapture to come. And expect, you know, that's not what God intended for us. And I don't think a spirit-filled a spirit -filled Christian will do that. I believe when we first get saved, that same... I know I was on fire that first probably six months. I mean, that's all I wanted to talk about was the Lord. But you know, the, the, the longer I went with that, the more I really did want to talk about Him. But I wanted to talk about Him in a different way because at that time, it took me a long time to realize truly what Jesus did for me on the cross. I knew He died on the cross, but I truly didn't know what He died for. But He died for each and every one of us. And we're scared to death to, to say His name a lot of times out in public. Or to even just pray over our food. You know, realize what kind of witness that is? But we're scared to death somebody might say something or talk about us. Hey, I don't care. Let them talk. As long as they're talking about somebody that loves the Lord, that, that's the only thing I want anybody to remember me for, is the fact that I love Jesus. And I love you all, and I'm done. Thank you all. I love you all.